Hello everyone, welcome back to Krita Studios. It has been a while since we posted our last video and uh, you know, crap happens. A lot of things have been going on and that is why the videos have been delayed a bit. But then again, we can cry a river some other time. Today, we are going to talk about something important and the important thing is this. Deepcool AK400. In essence, it is the half of Deepcool AK620 that we reviewed a while ago. Now, the AK620 has two cooling towers, this one has one. The AK620 has two cooling fans, this one has one. When it comes to the heat pipes, the AK620 has six of them, but this one has four of them. Now, there is not a lot to talk about in this department, simply because everything is more or less the same as the AK620. So we have the same meter expand design, we have the same black top heatsink cover, and a similar looking fan, although the model is different and it looks the fan looks slightly different to the when compared to the fans of the AK620, but it is more or less similar. So you also get a manual and then installation and everything is simple, but there's a, there's a slight issue and we are going to have to show it to you. So now we are going to talk about the small niggle with the installation. So these are the spaces that we are going to need. This is the plate and then there are four screws to mount them. I'm going to place the plate but as you can see these are the holes, these are the spaces, the grooves for the AM4 screwing mechanism and as you can see the plate sits on the VRM heatsink and if I move it down the grooves do not match. So this is the problem. So now I'm going to use the AK620 mounting kit in order to mount the AK400 and we are going to start with these spacers. Now that the spacers are done, we are going to go ahead with the retention plates. So once that is done, there are four more screws that you can use in order to tighten these plates down. And it's a, it's a fairly simple mechanism. AK620 installation was really easy, even though the manual was not very detailed. Now, as you can see, the retention plates are in. So now the only thing left to do is to place the cooler on the plates and tighten down the screws. And again, that is a fairly simple process, but you will need to remove the fan in order to be able to access the screw. So this is the bare heat sink. And as you can see, the screws line up just fine. The only problem is that the orientation is not going to be like this, like from the front of the case to the back of the case. Instead, it is either going to exhaust to the top or take in fresh air from the top and exhaust it down towards your graphics card. So this is the only, uh, I'd say, quirk about installing the AK400 using the AK620 kit. About our test setup, we have a Ryzen 950-950X sitting on an Aorus X570S Pro AX with 16 gigs of RAM and a cheap graphics card just for display out. The first test that we did was with Precision Boost Overdrive and that is the state most people are going to be using this processor in. Not everybody, not everybody fancies overclocks. With an ambient temperature of 24.5 degrees Celsius, at idle, the Delta T die that AK400 got us was 11.3 degrees Celsius. When applied with the load, 10 minutes of Cinebench R23, ambient temperature 24.5 degrees Celsius and the Delta T die sat at 62.5 degrees Celsius. Now, just as a comparison, the deep cool AK620 in the same test, ambient also remains the same. The Delta T die was 7.9 degrees Celsius and the Delta T die at load was 56.6 degrees Celsius. Now, most of the processes nowadays, they have a dynamic boosting behavior. It, behave, it depends on power and temperature. So if the temperature is higher, the processor is going to lower the clocks in order to maintain, in order to be away from the threshold and stay within the threshold temperature. So based on that, we made this little graph to show you 
the boosting behavior that Ryzen 950, 950X exhibited with both of these coolers. For the AK620, as you can see with the red line, the average clocks sat at around 4200 MHz and as shown with the blue line, for the AK400, they sat at around 4100 MHz. So there's a 100-110 MHz of difference between the two coolers in terms of the clocks. But like I said, precision boost overdrive, it is dynamic in nature. And so if the cooler cannot cool the processor enough, it is going to lower the temperatures. And so we will never be able to have an apples to apples comparison. That is why we apply a static overclock. And as it was seen in our last video, where we did the shootout with the three coolers, the overclock that we went with was all core 4.5 gigahertz. But that proved to be a bit too much for the AK400. We even tried with the two fans, since in the box you're supplied with another set of fan clips so that you can add a second fan. But even with that, it failed to pass the test. It took a little longer, but it failed. So we had to go a little easy with our overclocks. So we went down a notch, 4.4 gigahertz overclock, 4.4 gigahertz all core was the overclock that we went with. Now let us talk about the temperatures that we got there. For the Deepcool AK400, at 4.4 GHz all core, the ambient temperature stayed at around 24.5 degrees Celsius and the Delta T die came out to be 63.5 degrees Celsius. Now, all of these tests were done at 100% fan speed PWM and at that PWM level, the fan speed for the AK400 was around 1850 RPM. Now, we are going to talk about the Deepcool AK620 at the same overclock in order to have a line of comparison, a relative comparison a relative measure of the performance of the AK400. The ambient sat at around 24.5 degrees Celsius and the Delta T die was 51.8 degrees Celsius in case of the deep cool AK620. Now, when we talk about the performance of the AK400, we have to talk about the noise, although it is not a significant factor because here we only have a, a single fan, which is not going to make a lot of noise, but it still spins up to 1850 RPM, which is a lot. So we are going to talk about the noise. At a noise floor of 36 dBA, at 100% fan speed, the AK400 sat at around 39.5 to 40 dBA, which is not a lot, very good. And at 50%, it was barely audible at 36.5 to 37 dBA. So in terms of noise as well, there are not a lot of problems and the AK400 runs really silent. So there's a fair bit of delta when it comes to the heat removing capacity of these two coolers and it is to be expected that is a big time dual tar air cooler and this is a single tar air cooler but even then simply 10 to 11 degrees of delta and that when you compare with the price delta between the two it the ak400 it comes out as a short short winner so we have talked about the performance now the important aspect the price so when we got the deep cool ak620 uh, we got it for around uh, 5,300 bucks approximately. Now, the last I checked on Amazon, it was going over 6,000. But even for that, if we consider the median price to be 6,000 and average price across a lot of vendors, for 6,000 bucks, the AK620 is a really good air cooler. But the AK400 comes in at around 2,200 to 2,500 rupees, which is absolutely amazing. And in terms of value for money it is really difficult to beat the ak400 and it is simply evident by the fact that the 5950x is the top of the line cooler in the ryzen in the ryzen 5000 series and the ak400 is able to cool it to some extent i mean not extreme overclocks but it can still cool it which is a big deal so anything below the 5950x even in the older lake line if you can keep the heat load around 170 to 180 and even touching 200 watts, I think the AK400 would be able to handle it, which is amazing when it comes to the performance you get for the price. So this was our little review of the AK400. If you like the video, like, share, subscribe. It is going to help us a lot and bye.